Shiram Jeram Jeram Om Shiram Jeram Jeram Om Shiram Jeram Jeram Revered Swamiji's brothers and sisters If you can kindly tell us what is to be shared we will try our level best <laughs> shifting from place to place and finally his father-in-law asked him to come back to Mangalore and set up a unit where saris, dyeing of saris and so many things were taken up. Initially the business was going up and up. Later on God willed that it should be going on the down and down. And naturally, everybody was upset. The father-in-law was... The, 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 the relationship between him and the father-in-law got strained. He came out of that and started his own. Again, God made him to go up and up. And later on, the decline started. The decline started to such an extent that... Uh, when you draw the balance sheet, <coughs> liabilities will be here, assets will be lifted. So the mounting liabilities you know, was there before him. The creditors started pestering him. At home, his wife was sick. Apart from that, she had orthodox views. He had progressive use. So there was no mental peace either at home or in the workplace. This was the severest period through which he was passing through. He did not get the answer as to how he should move forward. At that time, Mahatma Gandhiji was on a tour and he was passing through Mangalore where there was a big public meeting. Vital Rao attended this meeting because many of his friends were closely associated with the national movement, freedom movement. Papa has written, he saw Gandhiji at a distance, not even very near. But something inexplicable, he started feeling and he said that was his first spiritual touch. Many of you may be knowing, 
Gandhi ji was a real life saint and uh, his only anchor was Ram. Ram, Ram. Everything his Ram was universal. So from that day onwards, <coughs> Papa also started chanting Ram Ram. Along with that, now before that, before the uh, chanting took place, he cried, you know, where is rest, where is peace? That was the heart's cry of Ramdas. That's what he has written in his first book. When you are asking about tapas, the, in, the deepest aspiration, no, intense aspiration, that should well up. Otherwise, you know, it will be lukewarm. That is why we are, we are there where we are, you know, though we have been associating with all these things. The intensity was not there. So God made circumstances in such a way that he cried. And in his case, God also blessed him not to cry to any outside factor, but he cried deep within. And the cry was heard. The answer came, he has, he has returned, from the great void. This is a very important uh, aspect we should all, as spiritual aspirants. When he says great void, he was very clear about what God stands for. And then he added that was the voice of Ram. And he defined Ram as the subtle and mysterious power, Narguna, Nirakara, Shashwata, Ananda, Saru. Narguna means name, uh, attributeless, Nirakara means without form, Narguna, Nirakara, Nirvigara, without any modification, Shashwata, eternal, Ananda, bliss. Suru. So God is the impersonal, impersonal aspect of the, of the Almighty Lord of the Universe, who is the indwelling force. He was very clear at the very start. So we can now surmise or in, infer that all these things came not because of the tapas. It was his intensity that brought him that made him to become aware of the goal to be scaled right from the first day of his first step in his spiritual journey. And then, after meeting Gandhiji, this was the stage he must have when he met Gandhiji, because it, this has not been clearly mentioned in the book, but we put two into two and two. It was in 1920. He said, this call came, and he said, it was in 1920 that Mahatmaji came to Bangalore. Nowadays, Google Baba is helping us, you know. So immediately we searched through Google Baba, and Google Baba said, in 1920, there was a big meeting in Bangalore. And even it is recorded, what he talked. So then, uh, then he started chanting. Then the to a certain extent, to a certain degree, he was enjoying the inner peace whenever he chanted. It is, sorry, again, it is not he started chanting. He started meditating and then followed the chanting. This is also a great hint, hint for all of us. It is not that we just start chanting. Because initially we will be enthused. Later on, unknowingly, unwittingly, it will slip into a superficial activity because we are not exclusively sitting on it. Among the various preoccupations, we also add this, that's all. So the problem is, 
we are not very clear about whose name we are chanting. So many dimensions are coming up, welling up in our heart. But in his case, he was very clear. Great void, Ram stands for the subtle and mysterious power, not an entity. And so this meditation was sustained through chanting of his name to remember him. Ram, Ram, Ram. Meditation and chanting was going on simultaneously, which is something which is still for all of us, it is a tough job. <coughs> While we chant, how can we meditate? While we meditate, how we can chant? But in his case, he was blessed with a technique wherein the, the meditating and chanting was going on simultaneously. Every one of us can do some pondering uh, to understand the desire, uh, this exposition of Papa. So first he said meditate, then chant. Then, When he was getting an inexplicable peace within, he wanted to retain it as much time as possible. Then comes the tapasya. We were able to understand that when the intensity had come to that level, where nothing else matters excepting to remember him, then slowly we have to remove that which obstructs or that which takes away this feeling. He must have found out from what we understand from his books and writings that he knew the creature comforts or the comfort zones. They occupy the mind seat, mindset, mind space rather. And unless it is filled with God dimension, we will not be able to eke out the maximum benefit out of it. So slowly, the first thing is, we have three times or four times food, you know. He reduced it to two, he reduced it to one, and that also one was gone. With only boiled potatoes, with no spices. First, tapashitya. Then the dress. He, he brought it down to the minimum, barest minimum. Then comes the bed. He was only using a mat. Then, trying, he, he cannot withdraw himself from his present field of activity straight away. So, he was attending to his job at that time. This is very important. God also made one of his closest friends to come, for, come forward and tell him who is well placed that I will take over your sick unit. I will clear all the liabilities. I will take over the administration and finance. You look after the technical side. Came forward. Even when somebody came forward, this is something very touching when we read that. He did not simply say, please do that. He said, don't invest any money, you will also lose it. <laughs> it is a sinking ship. Then the other man said, that you don't worry, that I will take care. So it was, it was not that you know, he was anxious to get up, to put this on somebody else. So how God has shaped him, you know, even at that critical moment when he was struggling for very existence, when somebody comes forward to be honest towards him, he was not hiding anything. He placed her in this the exact picture so that he should not be misguided. God tested him on these things. But the other man stood firm, took over. But still, Papa had to go there. So he said, then, even the period ever so small, 
He was trying to remember him through chanting. So he made it, it was very clear to him that chanting is for remembering him who is within. Has the subtle and mysterious power. So later on he said, we should chant the name with the feeling that we are chanting the name of one who is within us, who is making me to chant. I am chanting the name of one who is within us and this chanting itself is being motivated, pulsated, activated by that power within. So every chanting was trying to link him with that reality. That is why later on in his teachings he said, Nama is the link between us and God who is within. And slowly, he was able to free himself from the clutches of anything outside, which we normally name it as tapas or vairagya. This passion towards anything and everything. He was at that time 36. 36, 37 years ago. And that is how he plunged into it deeply. In one of his writings he made it clear ceaseless remembrance of him through chanting his, chanting his name side by side with contemplation upon the attributes of him. Had come to him even before the advent of his taking up the Yatra, where you know he left everything. Because after two years, from 1920 to 1922, There also, uh, when Swami asked about uh, Tapas, yes, others could not understand. He was still a family man. He was still involved. He was a professional being. But the outcome of his intensity and his dedication was that he was able to withdraw himself from the common run of life gradually, which None of his friends, none of his family members were able to understand. They all became panicky that something had gone wrong with him. In one of the books of his son-in-law, he has, it has written that out of 24 hours, 22 hours he was inside. Meditating and chanting. He, he moved to a separate room in his house. Food and uh, food is not no Indian you know, uh, food was there and um, all basic comfort zones were denied and then they thought you know something had gone off the head they became very very they were shocked however much they pleaded no then finally they sent over to they informed this to his father to whom he was very much devoted, who was away in a place called Udupi. So immediately he rushed up to see what is happening. So as soon as he said, this also is an important word, because we as spiritual aspirants, we are trying to get something out of this so that, you know, that will keep on coming back to us very often and that will put us on our spiritual journey without any distractions. As soon as the father came and asked him, son, what is happening to you? At that time, Papa was able to say this, you know, God is making me to repeat his name. The sense of doership, you know, 
the sense of ownership. It was slowly receding, which is the ultimate result, which should be the ultimate result of any spiritual progress journey. The spiritual progress is marked by to what extent we have been able to hand over the ownership, the process, the, the the doership, the sufferership, the enjoyership, the losership to them. In putting it in another words, the moment we become aware, aware means not the awareness of what we are talking, the moment we realize, that would be the best word, the moment we realize that we have, our life has been actuated by that principle, God, does he not know what all should be done through us? Does he not know what is to be provided to us? If these two become clear to us, then we become a, we, we, we discharge our role as a functional ego, that's all. A cleric, clerk, you know, a CEO and a clerk. The CEO, the boss gives the instruction, the other one carries out the instruction. In our case, we are the boss. You know? we, we think our life is from us only. But in his case, in such a short time, he was able to understand that the boss is making him to do a particular thing. God is making me to repeat his name. So, we keep on thinking about it, no? This, this, these going through will enable us to know where exactly we are. What are the insufficiencies or uh, what are the out factors that we have to improve? Which are the, which are the areas where we have to improve? Two, three messages are very clear. One is intense aspiration should be there. And then we try to understand what are all the prerequisites to make it a reality. And then we adhere to it no matter what others say. Fixed resolve, sustained faith, optimistic outlook. These were the three mantras he held. Fixed resolve. The sense of individuality must become aware of the indwelling and all-pervading reality. Who is behind, who is, who is actuating all thoughts, words and deeds. Fixed resolve. Sustained faith. Sustained faith in the words of the masters. He was also simultaneously reading, going through, not reading, reading, we are all reading, you know. He was also blessed to go and every, every, Every book, every master, like uh, the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, words of Swami Vivekananda, words of Swami Ramakrishna, words uh, uh, the Light of Asia on Buddha's life, New Testament of Jesus' life, Srimad <coughs> Bhagavad Gita. Yoga Varsishta, which is supposed to be the toughest Vedanta book. All these things, uh, Gandhiji's many of the uh, books. Young India and Ethical Religion. Later on when we started going deep into Gandhiji's teachings, we found many, many are, many expressions are exactly the same. Gandhiji also said, Ram, a universal Ram, the Atma Ram. Gandhiji also said he is a mysterious power, not an entity. <coughs> and uh, in, of course, in Gandhiji's case, he uh, made it very clear that if you remember his words, he said, whatever I am involved in, whether it is individual, spiritual, political, social, because Gandhiji had initiated a lot of movements, you know, in India. Not merely the freedom movement, social reforms, Khadi movement. 
even somebody has to join Gandhiji's ashram, they have to observe eleven pradas. Satyam, Ahimsa, Brahmacharyam, Asteyam, Aparigraham, Swadhyay, Swadeshi, Nirbhayatvam, Absence of Untouchability, Sarva Dharma Sabhavana, like that. Then only one can join. So absolutely based on spiritual values. And then Gandhiji also said, if I were to uh, understand that God can be realized if I go to Himalayas, I would have done it. But later on I came to know He is not beyond His creation. It's a beautiful word. To love His creation is to love Him. To serve His creation is to serve Him. So it is not, it is not separate or taken away from the present field of activities. The same thing we could find in Papa's life. Though initially God made him to take up a tool, that means, you know, when he prepared himself sufficiently, eh? ah, here also this is something on which we have to keep on thinking. It is not that he prepared himself, he, he prepared Papa to take up this so that he will get the spiritual progress. No. He had attained all these. So then why was he prompted to leave everything on 27th December 1922? He himself had said, intuitively God whispered that you should also know that he is everywhere. Not merely an indwelling reality, he is also an all-pervading reality expressing through the outer creations. So we find Gandhiji and uh, his expositions. So he started on that particular day, leaving everything, whatever he was hugging, as me and mine, including his name. So if we are naming it as a tapasthalia, the tapasthalia enabled him to bring out the God dimension behind everything in his mind. So the final act was, even the name has to be surrendered, because the name was given to identify himself as an individual entity. The moment we come out of our mother's womb on a particular day, the naming ceremony is performed to all of us, so that we, people will be able to easily identify us, you know. It's a Vyavaharic adjustment. Otherwise, how will we transact with everybody? So, and it was giving us a, a platform, a, a, sorry, a, a support. Muktananda immediately will look at it, you know. So that is the one which makes us to believe that I am that. Even that has to be surrendered to him. So God made him to take up this as Vital Rao. On the 27th December morning from Mangalore, he got into the train. He had a few books, not three, two or three books. He wrote two letters. When he said Tamasteria, yes. One letter to his former wife. He said, Dear sister, this is what he has written. So that they were away. God, his son in law has written, God conspired even to, to have the smooth sailing. You know? Otherwise, in, from a house, you, when you get down, there will be so many uh, seeds, you know. Mrs. Sarsucha daughter as there. So they were they they had to go to some other place for some function. So say that God conspired Papa to take up this decision on the particular day. Nobody was nobody was there at home at that time. So early morning train, five o'clock, Madras May. He got into the train. And from that moment onwards, because he has started 
expressing it through his uttar. First of all, we find there is no planning at all. Every moment, everything takes place as commanded by God through outer factors. So in a place called Eero, in between, when the train reached, he got down. Why he got down? He was motivated to go down. And then he was sitting in the platform. He had not taken anything. He was only doing the mental chant. a chanting. Chanting not vocal. Mental chanting. Vocal chanting enabled him to graduate himself to the practice of mental chanting. He had said that mental chanting is far more effective than vocal chanting. And from the, from the uh, practical point of view, suppose in ashram we have this, you know, we can chant. When we go out, how am I to keep it up? I may be walking, I may be traveling, I may be working in an institution, I may be involving myself in social activities. At that time, suppose I vocally chant, how can it go? So, so, so the mental chanting was practiced so that it can go on without causing any disturbance to anybody. So this was taken up and in our year old, when, then only he, re, he knew that from morning till that evening he has not taken any food. So he, a mother was, uh, he saw a mother and then he said, can you give me some food? Is there any food? She immediately made him to sit and offered him one some, some curd rice or something. That was the last time we have seen anything asked by him. Then somebody, he went and sat in the platform. Somebody asked him, where are you going? You know it, he said. That means whatever he says, it is final. So he said, I am going to Trichy, another place. Okay, you can come with me. From that day onwards, nothing was coming out from him. No planning, no initiative from his side. Virtually handing over lock, stock and barrel to the Almighty Lord of the Universe. From the minutest to the grossest. And then the train brought him to a place called Trichy. Somebody directed him to a place called Sri Rangam, where there is a famous temple. As he was reaching Sri Rangam, he happened to see a place called Amma Mantapam, where that was the that was the that was on the banks of the holy river Kaveri, where Mother Kaveri was flowing. Suddenly the prompting came to go there and then offered all the white clothes he was having. And he had taken two ochre colored. He put on himself and he dropped everything that was that he was claiming as himself, including the name. And God prompted him to name himself as Das of Ram, Ram Das. Boss and subordinate, Bhagavan and Bhakta. Anyway. It was very clear. And he took three vows. All know the, how Almighty was giving him everything. Even because none, none of the traditional way of approach, he did that. So he took three Vradas. First Vrata, henceforth, this life will be consecrated to the meditation and service of Ram. Meditation means to, not this, you know, meditation is that uh, always becoming uh, conscious of the presence of the Almighty inside and then outside it expresses in the form of love and seva. You know? So henceforth this life will be consecrated to the meditation and service of Ram. 
the second one all ladies should be looked as their his mother in vaishnava janato you you remember that matare you know all all and the third vrata is henceforth he should be living purely on the arms received which god makes somebody to offer them so the relationship the possession ship everything was so the sanyasa means the real sanyas it is not there, there is no other condition there is no other uh, suffix or puff prefix only these things were the guiding factors every every moment of his life he is dedicated to the meditation and service of ram then naturally when he deals with men and matters the first thing that that might come to us about our relationship with the opposite gender so there the moment we remember our mother everybody is a mother god has come in the form of a mother and the third one possession the possession you know nothing will be initiated nothing will be mobilized nothing will be kept later on we used to learn parimiti parigraha you know if at all anything is basically needed we will have the limited possession excepting the basic the basic necessities so relationship and possessions are totally made clear here and he was adhering to that stating to that we can name it as tavasthya a tavasthya not because to attain or realize something a tavasthya because he was blessed with that you know even before that but a tavasthya that would constantly sustain in his realization the moment he came out of uh, his place and when he was asked to when he was made to expose himself to the whole world god has given this insulation now we can call it as insulation so that you know he will not if no other no other thought will enter into him or disturb his level of his experience at this after this three vardas he started this from the deep south to the extreme north badrinath on those days 1920s he passed through rishikesh also he must have been in rishikesh in 1923 <coughs> later on when we went to rishikesh and uh, started slowly and trying to understand something about gurudev's life and mission we were told that gurudev also as dr kuku sami when he decided to when he god gave him the calling to move from malaysia to india and though many of the things are not still clear one thing we were all able to understand that from 1923 to 1936 because 1936 the ashram was founded shivananda ashram so the 12 years 13 years he was there so papa was also there though they did not meet <coughs> papa also had written that he stayed in the swarga ashram there were cut kutiyas you know and uh, gurudev also was occupying one of the kutiyas anyway let us so the uh, each one as placed before us every mahatma has placed before us what should be what we should try to emulate from them we may not be able to follow in the same way but there are certain things can be emulated from their life and this is how papa teaches us not in words by enabling us to go through his biography of sketches especially in the transitory period where you know from bitter rao to 
Ramdas and Swami Ramdas. And that was his lifestyle throughout. From 1923 when he came back, he was again in a Pachapandava cave in Mangalore. And again he set himself on a tour. The first one was chronicled in the book first, In Quest of God. Later on during his day, during his uh, stay in the cave, the, what do you call it, sorry Loki, you know, talking to oneself. He was having a constant dialogue with the inner reality. Uh, this is also another hint for all of us. He used to say later that you develop a constant dialogue with him. We are all involved in so many activities. But as soon as we get up, you know, the mind is fresh. We, we have been asked to spend at least two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, you know, whichever is possible, to have a dialogue with him. So that we become aware that he is within, you know. So that came out in the form of At the Feet of God. It's a beautiful small book where he addresses this uh, in reality as mother and he asks simple questions like what all we ask. Very, very thought-provoking questions. That means even though he knew that uh, he is behind everything, at the same time he has also given us so many thoughts because of the exposure for 35 years of so all those thoughts will come up. It is not that thoughts will be away. But that thoughts were used to understand the inbuilding reality more and more clear. Previously we were trying to get an answer for our questions. But now we are very clear that the questions were given to us to make ourselves understand more and more, not for merely getting an answer. So with that bhavana, the, the dialogue was going on and he was able to put everything for the posterity. And the third book was In the Vision of God, when he set out his tour again. Elaborate. He comes back and uh, jots, he started jotting it down. In his own hand. Luckily the original manuscript is still there. But we don't open it because it is likely to get damaged. Because 19, it must have been to 1930, almost 100 years now, no? So we have bound it, we opened it, of course. And later on he edited and added something more. And so we can, we need not be too much sentimental about it. He has written again, uh, along with whatever, so that was in 1930. He had made the manuscript. So it came out only in 34, first edition. So, in quest of God, at the feet of God, in the vision of God. And later on when he was prompted to take a foreign tour, he said, world is God. These are the four books he has directly written. So, the, when we are talking about Tavashriya, yes, these are all some of the factors that come back to us again and again and again. It is not that uh, the tapas that we have all normally understood. A practical demonstration of a journey where the exclusiveness is maintained, you know, which is what is called, you know, what is needed through tapasya. We are trying to withdraw from the field of outside and pooling our entire attention to this. So to him, the exclu we can say exclusiveness, exclusively concentrating upon this venture. We can, we can name it as self-denial, we can call it as tapasya, we can call it as, you know, withdrawal from the usual common run, denying himself of many things. Later on, in one of his uh, uh, writings, he has mentioned, yes, we should keep on bringing that dimension on.
when we are liberated from the ostentatious and uh, ostentatious rituals and uh, outer activities, a day will come when we go to the eternal in the spiritual nakedness of the soul where nothing else is required. Thereafter, the sense of individuality, the functional ego comes out with spontaneity, simplicity, humility. Now, we react to events and individuals spontaneously, not, a, not based upon our intellectual wisdom. <coughs> not based upon any other factor. That, will, that can come only when the otherness is overcome, you know. Every moment he is planned, so we don't have to do anything. And he is wisdom absolute. In universal prayer, every day we are Gurudev, you know, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. So when we, when we accept that he is omniscient, we don't have to do anything, you know. He is there in our heart. He is Sachidananda. You know, he has mentioned, you know. He is Sachidananda dwelling in everybody's heart. That is the same word, you no? Know? Mm. So he is there within us. So we don't have to search for that from outside. At the moment we are not aware of him. That is why our intellect has been given to us to gather as many from his creations by observing and by learning which we call as education or knowledge or wisdom. Not wisdom, knowledge. So in his case, when, the, when you get stabilized, you don't have to do anything. He will make you to react to events and individuals and he will make you to react. So spontaneity. Simplicity. Because you don't have to think about what is to be stored for us. The sense of insecurity is not there. Absolutely it's not there. That is why just to maintain this body, you know, you need something simple, simple life. So spontaneity, simplicity. And then humility. Humility means not the humility that we have understood. A humility which gives us the feeling that he is the great provider who has provided everything to us right from our seed stage up to this moment. So when he has given, what is there for me to ask? So the sense of asserting our sense of individuality is totally absent. That can express it as humanity. So he says, the spiritual journey to him, from his experience he said, spiritual journey takes him to a stage where all that we have been thinking or adding on to us, we have started from him only. Later on in one of his letters he made it very clear, he is the first cause from whom everything has come. So he is the indwelling reality. And we people try to understand it intellectually, you know, because we want everything to be understood first. So then for us, he has mentioned, you try to go to the origin of your and the world life. Because then only the mind will, mind will be satisfied. Otherwise, the, 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 the doubting Thomas will always be there, you know. So we need, we need a, a, a method, we need a method which also he, we will realize later that it has been given to us by him. He gave us an intellect, he made us to forget about him. Devi Hesha Gunamayi Mamamaya Duratyaya, no? In Bhagavad Gita it says, I, I have created this Maya, it is very difficult to cross over. Mameva. Maya Medam Paradide. 
when you when you come to me as my soul i am the sole one i am the only one then only you will be able to get over this until such time this this duality uh, relying upon the puny our intellect that will keep on come, coming to us so in his case he says these three will become and no no in his case you know god blessed him not to rely on anything from outside so he keeps on harping that you know in all his writings in one of his quotation he goes bluntly there is no in uh, need for an intermediary somebody wrote to him will you kindly pray you know we all have some some problem you know so we write to him for blessings so when we see a mahatma we will say you know pray for me you know i am in deep trouble <laughs> this is our tendency even now so but uh, in his so when he such a uh, when a devotee wrote to him like that he replied he god does not need an intermediary if you think god can talk through ramdas he can talk through you as well because you cannot accuse him of partiality <laughs> <laughs> and next word switch on your wire for direct communication <laughs> why do you deny him in your heart very powerful a very powerful the moment we start praying today also we had the opportunity to meet somebody who is seriously sick so at that time this was the prompting that came though his will prevails he has given a freedom to pray to him it is not that we are we are trying to question his will but with the freedom he has given we are praying to him that attitude is okay you have prompted us to pray so that it will add to my spiritual journey and the proportionate to the intensity you will also reconsider now you have decided agreed your will prevails but you are testing through your own devotees to what extent so to in our probably to make our faith more and more firm he will also bring out miracles so again we are back to papa's words so there is no need for an in, there god does not need an intermediary so he, he could say that because right from day one of his spiritual journey his reliance was totally on the indwelling aspect of god nothing from outside and in his uh, he has been blunt many of you might be shocked to uh, read that he says whatever ramdas says don't be guided by that <laughs> try to rely on what is coming from inside you see he wants us to he wants us to somehow try to get a link between otherwise there is a likelihood that we may shift to some external factor which will hamper our progress because ultimately he is seated within the sense of individuality is not aware of his presence within so all the activities he makes us to see outside family profession society spiritual any activities in which he makes us to feel that we are this, we are doing spiritual activities we are uh, household activities professional activities social activities we name it you know we name it from our individual standpoint we are naming it but here we should know that the just like you know the when the electricity is off you know all our gadgets come to stand still you know different activities that are going on it will come to a stand still so when we become aware that we we don't glorify the bulb or the bike or anything anything that we use through electricity 
But we are aware that irrefutability is not there. Everything comes to a standstill. So similarly, through his life he is making us to ponder this truth and trying to realize every moment, not for a trice, you know, every moment that it is, without that electricity we, we are all gadgets. You know. <laughs> the moment is this. He switches off, finished. So behind every thought, every word, every deed, every happening, every situation, every object, every person. It is that, it is that, it is that, it is that. Then why should you uh, search for him outside? But this word, you know, switch on your wire for direct communication. He made you to, for later on we will, when we take God into task, that is what is called this dialogue. Why are you making me unaware of your presence when you are the propelling force? This is unfair. We can say that. In our own language we can say that. You have made me to forget, forget that you are within. I, you may say Maya, yeah, but the truth is you have made me unaware. But we, here comes for people like us the relevance of a spiritual guru. Because if the spiritual perceptor has not told us, how will we know? So he makes the Mahatmas to scale the heights, come back to the our 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 level, then convey to us, hey, this is not the path, that is the path. We have travelled and reached. And each one follows their own unique method. So we try to, there, 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 there comes the relevance of gurus. That also he plans, you know. At the appropriate time, he will somehow bring about circumstances by which we get in touch with a spiritual present. Slowly trying to shift our priority, but 99% we don't shift. We carry on with it and at the same time developing our contact. And the stage will come when we carry on with all our activities without any outer change, but with the feeling that he is making me to function as a sannyasi, function as a householder, function as a professional being, function as a social being. It is not that he is only in that, no. Samam sarveshu bhudeshu tishtantam parameshu. Papa used to say in a small book called Thus Speaks Ramdas. He is there in entirety in perfection, in all his creation. He is there in entirety and perfection. So it is not that he is more in somebody or less in somebody. Only the degree of awareness varies. His realized soul is 100%. His presence is felt. We bhaktas or aspirants or spiritual seekers, we might get a glimpse because of His grace. But again, no, 1%, 2%, 5%, 10%. Whenever we are in difficulty, we intensely pray. The prayer is heard. You know? Immediately we become aware of His presence. After some time, it dilutes. Again, we are back to me and mine. I am the deciding factor. I, I know I am kind of not to say. Again, He gives us some kick, pricks and knocks. Again we plead, again he accedes to our request, we get a glimpse of his person. Ah, by God's grace, I, I, that's what we say in our body. So in their case, they are well established. So we are, as spiritual aspirants, we are now trying to reach a, that stage, you know. You make, I don't know how to, how to, how to make myself aware of your presence, all these, all the 24 hours. I know you are there intellectually because I believe in the words of my master. Because they have scaled the heights. But as I say, my equipment is not cooperating. 
My mind is still think that I have to do planning, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have. Why are you making me to do that? Why don't you make my mind and intellect to hand over it completely to you? Something I don't know. That is why he says, every, every day morning you try to spend some time. At least one minute, two minutes, five minutes. Have a dialogue by which we try to assert that he is with it, he is with it, he is with it. And in order to give a boost to that, <coughs> Papa said, how do I, how am I to conceive him? Because he is inconceivable. When you say he is subtle and mysterious power, I cannot. So in one of his talks, he defined what is spirituality. In that, he brings it out beautifully so that it is easy for our intellect to understand. It is not easy to realize. It is easy to understand through intellect. That he is the life force. If you remember his words, he said, life is the expression of Atman. Consciousness, he is there in the form of awareness, consciousness. He is in the form of intelligence. All these three put together, you can give him the name God. So then when we try to have a dialogue with him, we try to slowly understand the heartbeat, the blood circulation, the digestion, the breathing. Without which we are not, we don't exist. But that we have seen, our intellect can easily understand. In a dead body, though all the, these things are not there. All the uh, uh, organs are there. But we say he passed away, cremation or burial takes place. So life has every way. So life is the expression of Atma. Then about consciousness, the again thing. The knowing principle in us, yeah. That is the, these are all the tangible ways through which we can understand. We know that we are seeing, you know. We know that we are hearing. We know that we are sitting. And finally, we know that we are. No? Nobody need tell us about our beingness, no? the existence. So that is what is called the awareness. Not aware of something, awareness itself, no? absolutely. Then we try to find out whatever that has come out in the form of creature comforts. It has come out only through intelligence. Everything. Buddhir buddhi vadamasmi. In Bhagavad Gita he says, Bijam maam sarvabhudanam vidhi, vidhi partha sanadhanam, buddhir buddhi vadamasmi, tejas tejas viramam. So I am the intelligence of the intellect. So he gives us some clarity now. So indwelling reality, indwelling reality means what? So when I have a dialogue with him, I try to slowly feel his presence in the form of life force, in the form of awareness, in the form of intelligence. The moment I open and transact, I need the language, you know. In the case of English here too, is it? Well, when there is no language, how can it come? Just imagine. The subtlest. After that, the text has come agreed. Printing technology has come agreed. For first language, you know, education has come agreed. Subjects have come. But first and foremost is this uh, language, you know. Where from? Then only we try to understand. It has come from intelligence. Powerful. All that we see now, anything that we name, it has come out from intelligence. So you have come out there. Buddhir Buddhi Vadamas. So, why don't you make me aware? I can understand intellectually all these things. Without life force, I cannot exist. Life force and awareness are intertwined. That is why I feel when he says, Satchit Ananda. I am Satchit Ananda when he says, Sat stands for the existence, 
Chits transfer this awareness and ananda, that is the outcome of the ananda. When we raise ourselves into that platform, existence and awareness is there, the rest of the me and mine. That is the ananda. The other day you were sharing, you know, Papa has defined what is ananda, objectless happiness. So it is not a happiness which we have understood as happiness. Mm. All our happiness is based upon either an object or a person or a situation. Here it is objectless happiness. It is independent of its own. It is not dependent upon anything, anything outside, anything knowable, anything outer. So Sat, Chit, and so when we try to develop this dialogue, we see simultaneously try to approach him through this and there comes the Nama. So now when he says Nama is the link between us and him together, and when he says meditated and chanted, we slowly start realizing that the chanting should be accompanied by Followed by, complimented by, supported by this dwelling. And uh, we feel, he has also mentioned, the slow chanting will help us. Otherwise, you know, the mind has no time, you know. Om Sri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram, Om Sri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram, Om Sri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram, Om Sri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram. Suppose we say that. The speed with which we are chatting. How can this take place? We don't know. We might be able to do that, just like the cycling, you know. Before cycling, we have to keep on trying, trying. The moment the balance comes to us, it will stay with us. But we, before the balance comes, we will again fall. <laughs> but suppose we take to Sri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram So here Papa says Chanting will enable us to free us from all other dissimilar thoughts. When we slowly chant and try to hear our own chanting, also meditating that the chanting is initiated by the power from within. We are putting a fence to our outgoing tendencies of the mind. So it becomes slowly inward. And then the next stage he says, the chanting is being heard, the chanting is being known, the chanting is being realized. Instead of active voice, it becomes passive voice. Chanting is heard. By whom? Chanting is realized. By whom? So he says, the witness consciousness emerges. The watcher is the real you, the self-immortal, he declares. In mantras, you know, just now we heard the mantra, Brahmanandam, Paramasukadam, Kevadam, Jnanamurtim, Dandvaditam, Gagana Sadrisham, Tattvamasyadi Raksham, Ekam, Nityam, Vimalam, Achalam, Sarvadi Sakshi Budam, Sarvadi Sakshi, Witness Consciousness, Bhavaditam, Trigunarihitam, Sadguru Tamamani. 
you are seated within me, you are there in the form of witness consciousness. Sarvadi Sakshi. So, Papa advises or recommends that chanting will, outer chanting, vocal chanting will slowly enable us to move to silent chanting. In silent chanting, the sound will not come, lip and tongue will move. And then we again graduate ourselves to mental chanting where the sound does not come out, lip and tongue will not move, but the chanting takes place. Then we slowly become aware of the chanting. Who becomes aware? Who is chanting? We get a glimpse of his presence. These are all some of it. And his specific utterance of God's name is to make the mind ultimately still free from all thoughts. And uh, both the Gurudev and the Papa draws our attention to this state. Every day we try on these things. Not that we have to run away from any field of activities, always trying to remind us that every field of activity you have made us to involve, now I realize you have given. Previously I was thinking I have shaped my life. I studied, I had an ambition, I reached, all those things I was studying. You allowed me to do that. And with that you have moved me to your present state. Now you are slowly trying to reveal to me that all these things are according to your plan. And all these things are a part of the your, this thing. The reason of which I don't know, you know that. So then, how am I to, how am I to get stabilized in you? Everything has come from you. Activity, a movement can come only on a movementless substratum. Sound can come only on a soundless substratum. Ah, yes, Papa says, through the sound you enter into the soundlessness, which is called silence. Silence, not as we understand literally as silence. It is, it is, it is not a dead matter, it is not zero, no? Just like space is not zero. That is why he used the word great wall. It is not nothingness, it is fullness. That is why in Upanishad we, we, we chant, you know, Purnamata Purnamil. Mm -hmm. Those are all mantras that give us the real meaning, which cannot be taken away. Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Avashishate. You know? Even if you take the Purna from that, the Purna is full. Just like the space, you know, we would have constructed this hall. But it has not taken away the space. It is in the space. Previously it was an unknown space. Now it is labeled as hall in the name of Gurudev. So the, 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 it is there always. Even if we put up this wall and roof, Purnam, Purnam Adaya, Purnam Eva. Even if we take away that, the Purnam the space remains. Tomorrow when we, God forbid, when we remove the uh, wall and the roof, the old, the the, the, the space which was there, it remains untouched, unaffected, unruffled, undiminished. So that stage, they have named it as silence. Yes? Hi, I'm Can you kindly briefly explain the significance of the Ram Sethu project? Ram Sethu, we have no idea about it. <laughs> All that we have heard is, at the time of, during the period of Ramayana, when Anjaneya Bhagavan went to Sri Lanka and located Sita Mataji. And then when he reported back to Lord Ramachandra, they decided to go to somehow bring her back. And at that time, it is difficult to cross over the ocean. So everybody tried their level best to build a bridge. We were told how it is possible. So when a stone, with all faith and devotion in the name of Rama, when we put it, it will not go down. 
tu vidu no we have read this that's all lord rama was watching so he said oh, my name is so powerful so without then looking here and there he also took one and raised it it went out <laughs> and then everyone was looking at it you don't have faith in your name <laughs> So with that faith, then only you know, probably you would have enacted this to make us get stabilized in that faith in the name, and then that is how the bridge. It was a bridge, and they all crossed over the ocean and reached there. And everybody was able to reach because everybody can't go like other neighbor one. No, he's he's blessed with a special uh, capacity to fly over with his body. and he told at in the ashokan i can you can be on my shoulder i will take you there then she said what will happen to rama's glory then yes. what are you talking and in a malayalam version of uh, ramayana where she explains that these are all only for one spiritual progress i have never been abducted rama has never left, left lost me rama stands for the nirguna niragara static aspect and i stand for the saguna sagara dynamic aspect in order to convey this we have brought out this rama and this all so so many things are there So in so that is why so in order to in order to know that is something which is impossible for us how am I to do it so if the faith comes first not merely faith perseverance effort perseverance patience commitment these are all the ways by which God enables us to be make a concept a reality to teach us that. We take it. We don't know this. Right? Each one can interpret in any way. We take Ram Sethu. He stands for this. Anything else? 